So welcome back, beautiful Emerald, to my podcast. It's been a while and I'm so delighted that you are back. Thank you. I am very, very happy to be here and selfishly just excited to be in your energy again. <laughs> well, me too. And I, I have you so much. <laughs> I love and adore you. And uh, those of you watching, uh, uh, listening to this, uh, you will have to go to the YouTube channel to see the ensemble that Miss Sinclair is wearing here tonight. Um, it is morning for her. So that is even more amazing. She just wakes up and she's fabulous. Uh, whereas I am pretty much in pajamas not really but pretty much <laughs> next to you that's what I look like in pajamas <laughs> I, I am so grateful you're here especially with the time difference and everything we made it work and I know last time my listeners loved the episode with you because you brought this fantastic energy mm -hmm. to sing a love heart <laughs> and um they loved your energy. I love your energy. Uh, it carried me through the day. And now, I, like I said to you, I want to be able to sleep because I know already <laughs> I feel like all like hyped up. Uh, so welcome back and please share with us what have you been up to? Yeah, a whole bunch, my dear. So as we were talking before we hit record, last episode, I was right on the brink of moving to Mexico. And I remember, I think I had just had a session with you before the episode, maybe it was after the episode, but it, you had just confirmed like, yeah, Mexico's your next higher timeline, go for it. And that really stuck with me because it was, I spent eight months in Mexico, had amazing, amazing community. It was everything my soul needed, especially after the four months of traveling through the US, which was another like spirits, like go on, get, get out of here. And so same thing thing spirits like go on get on down to Mexico <clears throat> and so I did and it was amazing like there of course was growth and challenges but for the most part it was it was really really good and expansive and then towards June it, it felt like it was time to go and so I did and and there was like a, a couple weddings I was going to attend for past clients that I helped to manifest their person so of course I had to like plug those weddings into the calendar and so similar to my road trip prior to the last episode where everything was just falling into place it was the same thing so it was a couple months uh, traveling throughout the U.S. June and July going to weddings seeing family and then it was Italy for a wedding. And I was like, well, I'm in Italy, so I might as well be in Italy. And I'd always had this romantic notion that I was going to travel Italy with my partner or with like my fiance or with like my husband, right? It was always like this beautiful, romantic, iconic thing that I had. And of course you can blame the movie. Like what was that movie with Diane Lane, the T Under the Tuscan Sun, right? Do you know that one? Yes, I was just thinking, yes, under the Tuscan sun. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Where she so is, is rebuilding that old house, yeah? Yeah, which yeah. I saw that house in person. <gasps> it's outside of Cortona, Italy, which I fell in love with. And I stayed there for a couple of weeks. So I I, I, I had this aha moment of like, Emerald, what are you, so why would you do what you tell your clients not to do? Which is once I get the guy, then I'll go to Italy. So I was like, bullshit, I am taking myself to Italy. So I spent three months traveling through Italy, just the northern part. I mean, I only had three months and I wined and dined and ate and like met beautiful Italian men, had some beautiful romantic nights. Like there was one night in Venice, like this guy I met, he treated me to this amazing meal and wine and a moonlight canal boat ride and then took me to his glass factory and gifted me jewelry. And I was just like, ah! it was so beautiful so, so romantic so it's been travel it's been a lot of travel and then after Italy I came here to Tbilisi Georgia and not in the U.S. but Georgia like bordering Russia and Turkey and Syria and Iraq and Iran like that Georgia which honestly I didn't even know I'll be honest I didn't even know it existed until my brother moved here like there's 197 planets or <laughs> 197 countries in yeah. on this planet and yeah. I don't have them all memorized so I didn't know anything about Georgia I didn't even know there was a country and in all fairness I thought you were you're in Georgia US so I was like everybody what? does like, yeah. what what do you mean there's Russia near you where's Russia near yeah. you <laughs> 
Well, and even when I tell people I'm in the country of Georgia, not the state, their mind still goes to like, Ooh. oh, she's in Georgia in the countryside. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, like it, when I told, when I was in Turkey, people are like, oh yeah, Turkey. Like people understand Turkey, but Georgia isn't really a big country on the map. It, it doesn't make a lot of waves. It's actually the birthplace of wine. Um, I drank a lot of nice wine these first couple months here, but now I'm back on the wagon. Um, and just like, it's not really serving me. So I decided to stay in Georgia because my brother married a Georgian woman. That's why he lives here. And they're pregnant. And so Auntie M wants to meet her nephew in May. And then his 40th is in June. So I'm going to stick around for that. Everyone's flying in from around the world. It didn't make sense to leave. And after all this travel, honestly, I was like, I just want to stay put in one place and, and really focus on my biz. Because even though I was working while traveling, as you can imagine, one of the biggest lessons I learned while travel is uh, that's a lot of freaking work to do by yourself traveling internationally. Because when I was in Turkey, that was with my partner. And so the three months of travel, I had a plus one, right? That was helping with where we were going and looking things up and finances and driving. And it was just so much easier as a team. And I didn't really consider how much work it would be traveling through Italy. I think it would have been a completely different story if I had just like moved to Rome for three months, but I was picking up every week or two and going somewhere new. So then it's like, where am I living? Where am I sleeping? Where am I eating? Where am I shopping? And then, oh yeah, I'm in Italy. So I want to go and see things. And so I learned a lot of lessons. We'll just say like, it was amazing, but I learned a lot and it kind of set me back in a way, which I guess isn't fair to say, because how can you ever be back? Like you're where you're supposed to be. But now that I'm in Georgia, I'm just like, I ain't going anywhere for a while. I'm going to stay here. And then, uh, like I was telling you before we hit record, go, I, I, I want to have some roots again. I'm ready for a house and friends that I will know more than just a couple of weeks or a couple of months. So I'm planning on moving back to the U.S., back to Colorado and planting some roots. And I have never, I'll tell you, I've never moved back to a place. So I'm I'm not apprehensive, but I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Like what will Colorado, because I'm looking at Colorado Springs again, like Denver and Boulder are options, but it's just not pulling me. And I was like, who, who what's the place going to be like like who am I like of all the places I've lived in the world like I have never gone back to the same place twice um but nowhere else feels like home than Colorado so it'll be interesting and maybe our next episode will have to be once I'm back in Colorado yeah. and and see how it feels and what unfolds and what life is like but I, I also know I'll be guided this entire time I've been guided I will end up where I am supposed to be. And that's just it's a big lesson right now in surrender and trust. And I feel like every time you and I talk, I'm like, hey, it's a big lesson in surrender and trust again, still, always. Because we get it. Because <laughs> we get it, right? Like we yeah. get it. And we were, like you said, we were talking before we hit record about how similar our lives run at the moment. Although I still think of you as the, um, Eat, pray, and love, girl. I definitely so ate my way through Italy for <laughs> sure. And now I'm absolutely in my prayer phase of like, oh, dear Lord, please guide me. Please let me know I'm in the right place. And I'm opening up for love. Like right now I can tell you I'm not available for Prince Charming to step into my life. I'm getting ready to be ready. It's like I'm cleaning up other things in my life and it's like I know it's in the future on the horizon but there isn't the there isn't necessarily the like excitement that comes like when you're manifesting something and you're like yeah it's on its way like I know it's on its way but I'm not yet in that excitable momentum if, if that makes sense Ooh. right and so it's like me of all people as a love coach, like I understand the different energies to be in when you're welcoming and love. And so like, I know it's on the horizon, but I'm not actively in that place of like, I'm ready. I'm mm. getting ready to be ready. As Abraham I love Hicks that. says. Getting ready to be ready. I love that. Yeah. I, I read a post of yours recently, Emerald, that uh, talking about how you are single and you are a love coach and to me that makes absolute sense because I'm thinking well if you were in a couple 
you have a different energy, I would imagine you would be more a couple coach or facilitator of intimacy between couples. But of course, in my head, it makes sense. You want to be single, you know, looking for love, looking for Mr. Right Now, you know, and stuff like be playing with those energies because that is where your clients are at. Uh, whereas when when you're in a couple, you have a different understanding, right? Like I don't even remember what dating was like, right? And it's it hasn't even <laughs> been that long, right? Like to me, it's just right. well, now I just want to go to bed early. So I love that you are still so excited, and you know you're dating and and you're sharing your experiences. But um, what are the ways that you support your clients with? Because we started talking about practical and energetics. What are your things that you play with when you're working yeah. with clients? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for saying that. And I want to actually say something about the single love coach aspect before we dig into that, which is I've had to work through my own insecurities around being single and a love coach. Cause I can tell you both times. So when Ron and I broke up and when Kurt and I broke up, I experienced a massive dip in self-confidence, a massive dip in revenue in my business, which showed me that I was putting too much emphasis on the external validation. Like because I'm in a relationship, therefore I'm a good relationship coach because I've manifested love and I'm currently in partnership, I can help someone else do it. But oh, no, I'm a single. Therefore, all of the skill sets that I have magically go away. Like that doesn't make any sense. And yet that's what I, I, I went through. And I was able to trace it back to its roots from when my mom and dad divorced when I was three, like her fear of I can't take care of myself. I can't do it on my own. And so, of course, I can look at it in hindsight and realize how those relationships and the breakups were serving me because it helped me see in which ways I was still putting a relationship on a pedestal and putting my value and worth outside of me. And so I really appreciate what you're saying of like, well, yeah, she's single, like she's going to be able to relate with what I'm going through. And that's absolutely a perk of me like doing the work and being single and putting myself out there. And, and I can relate with my clients more, even like going online and trying online dating. I'd never done that before. I've always just manifested my guy. And like, how can I support my clients going through online dating if I've never done it? And so I went through it so I could understand and realize what my clients were going through. So I can say, all right, well, this is how I do it. This is what I've experienced. And that's been really good. And at the same time, I had to work through my feelings of not enoughness. And so now I'm much more vocal about it as a way to continuously like put the nail in the coffin of my value as a coach has nothing to do with the fact that I'm in a relationship or not. My value as a human being has nothing to do with, an, I'm a, with if I'm in a relationship or not. And this feels like it makes me an even better, stronger coach because I want to remind all the women listening, like your value and your worth has nothing to do with if you're single or not, if you have money or not, if you're whatever it is you're doing, whatever it is that you look like, like your worth is on the inside. And when you can tap into that deep well and reservoir of self-worth, self-knowing, self-trust, self-confidence, self-love the relationship will naturally step into your life, just like everything you desire. And that's the premise, the concept of manifestation, the external reflects the internal. And so that's why, honestly, right now, I'm not looking for a relationship. Like I'm kind of open, but I'm not fully, fully open because I also realize that this time right now is a really sweet spot. Like I was saying, getting ready to be ready of like, there's still some of these old cords and ties and belief systems that says you're not good enough because you're single. How could you be a good enough relationship coach? And if I was a business coach, I don't think these fears and insecurities would have come up. But if I was a business coach and struggling in my business, then, oh yeah, how could I be a good business coach? Because I'm not doing good in business. And so it's a very interesting time. 
And I share this because I think it's really important for women who are single, rather than make up the story of there's something wrong with me, there's something wrong with men or dating, or once I get the guy that I'm finally good enough to actually take this time when you're single as a sweet spot of what is this showing me? What do I need to unpack? What are these stories of external worth and validation? And like, how perfect that I'm a love coach so that this shit can come up to be cleared, which is your value, your ability to coach all the skills, the knowledge that you have is still there. Who cares if you're in a relationship or not? You've been in relationships. You've helped clients get into amazing relationships, period. End of story. So I'm doing the work. I'm seeing where this stuff comes up in my own life. And at the same time, I'm pulling back and seeing how this is all divinely orchestrated to help me step even more fully into my power and my knowing and my worth and my self-love and my self-confidence. So it's like, oh, this is cool. This is good. This is serving me. And so anybody who's listening that's single, that perhaps is going through the same mind fuckery of creating these stories of like, well, actually, no, this is good that, that this stuff is coming up. The darkness comes to the light so that you can shine a light on it. And like you and I were talking about before we hit record these last six months, and especially these last like six weeks, as I'm working on ascending to the next level, it's like, well, then all the energetic gunk that's not a fit is going to come to the surface so that you can look at it, so that you can feel it, so that you can heal it, get it out of your energy field. And it's like, I also have a really big vision and dream and energy for my 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 life my partnership like this is the work that I do I'm not going to settle for like good enough out of fear it's like no I'm like I'm manifesting a super high level relationship but guess what I can't get that if I am still in this lower vibration of my worth is defined by my relationship because that's codependency but you know what's interesting to me though listening to you Emerald is Remember, I think, I believe in your, in our session, I said you're the leader that walks a few steps ahead. And this, what you're doing now, um, feels like you are just a few steps ahead of perhaps where your clients are, which makes you more relatable. You're like that girlfriend that is, hey, I'm on this journey with you. We're both single, right? We're doing this together, but I've got also this insight knowledge, right? And personally, for me, I would find it's kind of like, you know, when you just start a business, let's say you're a mompreneur and you're just starting a business, a coach that's making $100,000 or whatever in a blink of an eye, you know, trying to teach you business, you're not going to perhaps, you're going to love listening, you're going to find maybe that is inspiring, but you will feel like there is a disconnect because I'm not there yet. And it's almost like I can put her on a pedestal, but it's going to come crumbling down and there's going to be resentment. Whereas someone who is just a few steps ahead, you know, that business coach is perfect for them. And this is where I think you are in the most perfect world, perfect place, because all the ups and downs, you're sharing it, right? Like you said, you do the online dating and then you share it, right? Like this is what it is. This is how it is, right? And um, even because I have friends who are, you know, relationship coach, intimacy coaches, and I would find for a woman who is looking for love, knowing that, okay, I went on a date, didn't work out, and then she has you to turn, you know, on, and you go like, hey, you know what, I've been there, I've done that, this is happening, this is that, this is how it is. I love that. I think it's beautiful, and that's what makes you a leader because you walk a few steps ahead, and then you turn around and you shine that torch onto those people that are right behind you. And that is a beautiful place to be, and especially because I know from my last episode you are so raw, so honest, so transparent. There is no BS. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm going to sell you the dream, but actually I am in the bathroom on the floor crying. But you know, <laughs> then I put my face on, I am fine. And here I am, right? Like you are raw and honest. And you say this, like I'm working through my stuff. And I know from my work, um, I have never experienced so much agitation, pain, self-doubt, as I have when I started working with spirit. It's like they go like, yeah, you're talking about this. Well, here it is in your world. 
let's see if you can walk to walk, not just talk to talk, right? Right. So I right. get this, and I'm like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. You gotta pr- you gotta practice what you preach, right? Yeah. Some it's- and sometimes we don't see the forest for the trees, so it's like it takes us a hot minute to realize, hang on a minute. I yeah. am doing something that I tell my fans up to do, right? Exactly. <laughs> and like, it's like, who are you in the gap? It's like the universe is showing me. It's like, Emerald, your clients are all in the gap between where they are and where they want to be, which is I'm single and I would like to be in a relationship. And the majority of our lives, we are in the gap. We're manifesting, we're creating, we're getting from where we are to where we want to be. And then once we get to where we want to be, guess what? We've got new desires. We raise the bar. It's like you got the dream job you always wanted. And after a couple of months, you want the raise, you want the promotion, you want something different, better, more. And so it's like right now, I feel like the biggest divine lesson the universe is giving me is who are you in the gap, Emerald? Because it's so easy to be Mrs. Positivity when you've got the partner, you're traveling through Turkey, the money's flowing in, the dream clients, the dream body, like woohoo. Whereas right now, I'll be honest with you, it's like, I look in the mirror and I'm heavier than I've ever been because of, you know, eating and drinking my way through Italy and Georgia. And I've had times where I look in the mirror and I'm like, I want to lose weight. And then it's like, wait a second, Emerald, are you really loving on your body? Like, what would you tell your client? You would tell her to look in the mirror and be like, you know what? I love you, food baby. I love every single (laughs) bite that contributed to you. (laughs) So it's like, I've had a lot of challenges air quotes come up to really help me step to the next level of how are you going to face this situation are you going to walk your talk because it's so easy to walk your talk when everything is cupcakes and roses but it's like right now when you're sitting in a mud pit you're gonna play in the mud and then wash yourself off or are you gonna pretend the mud's not there like what are you actually going to do how are you going to lead yourself and so if we go back to I want to be up here, then the universe is like saying, all right, we're going to give you all these opportunities to become that woman, but it's not going to be like a walk in the park. And I sure wish it was. <laughs> it never is, right? You ask for so, strength. You don't just get strength. You get the situation that will to give you strength. Uh, yeah, yeah. Make you strong. You got to so, lift the weights. Mm-hmm. So what are you doing with your clients then? Like, how do we play in the Emerald's world? I, I, okay, so let's go back to what we were, were going to talk about on the podcast this episode is all good. before we got into the life of Emerald. So, <laughs> hey, but they're all connected. So you can't have one without the are. other. It's all yeah. together. You're right. You're right. So what was coming through that I really wanted to talk about, because this came up for two of my clients recently, which is they made the list of what they want in a partner, right? The tick the boxes. And we could say the same thing for anything you want in life. Like, the lifestyle, the travel, right, that you and your family did, or the dream home, right, the dream job, whatever it is, it's like, it's pretty easy to get clear on what the check mark list would look like. And so I had a recent client that got everything on her list. But after a while, it was just like, she was trying to force herself to feel the feelings because he was everything on the list of like, okay, I can, I can, I can get my heart involved. Like I can figure this out. Like he's everything on the list. I've never had anything like this before. Like he blows my mind as far as like what an exceptional human being. And so she was trying to get her feelings on board. And eventually she realized like, I can't, I can't make myself feel a certain way. And then that reminded me of a past client where she made her list and she manifested everything she wanted in the guy really quickly. But after a date or two, it was like, it wasn't that she wasn't feeling it. Like he was a bit of a jerk. Like he was mean to the server. He would drive too fast in the car. She would ask him to slow down. He wouldn't like, he was disrespectful, kind of narcissistic. And so again, it was this reminder and I teach this all the time. You don't want the thing. You want the feeling underneath the thing. And I've met a lot of world travelers that honestly, underneath the surface, they're not really happy. It's like they're doing what they always wanted to do, but they're missing that sense of fulfillment, connection, family, whatever it is. And that's why like, I'm staying put here. Like the travel through Italy was amazing. And after three months, I'm like, I just want to be somewhere. And so if we, 
if we think about the relationship that a single woman would desire, or even if you're in partnership, right? Like you don't want a partner just to have a partner. You want certain feelings and connection and intimacy and love and being seen and heard and, and all of that, right? Like you want the feeling underneath the surface. And so right now, what I'm working on and what, of course, I'm working on my clients with is okay, you've got the guy or the girl, whatever, you have this external representation of the list. But more importantly, what is it bringing up for you with the feelings? And to really be able to dig into the feelings. And so with a couple of these clients right now that are going through the same thing, yes, okay, we have the well, let's look at the list. Is he ticking all the boxes? And in both of these cases, the person is. Sometimes it's, he's not even meeting the non-negotiables. And so it's like at a logical level, well, that's pretty easy. Like, come on, like, that's why you're feeling that way. He's not even meeting the non-negotiables, but he's ticking all the boxes and something's coming up with the feeling. So what is it? Is it, is it, is it you? Is it the client? Is it me? Is it like something that's going on with me that I need to look at and investigate or is it something in the relationship? And this is where a lot of women get stuck of like, I'm really trying to figure out, is this my shit or is this just not in alignment? And so what's important is to sit with the feeling. And too often what we want to do is ignore it. We want to push it down, suppress it. We want to tell ourselves a story, but everything's right. And once again, I'll use this client as example. She's been battling with this. She's like, but everything's right. I'm like, yeah, but it's not because this feeling keeps coming up and you've been ignoring it. You've been minimizing it, but we know if you minimize a browser on your computer, it doesn't go away like for good. It's just, it's minimized. And you do that enough times, eventually your computer's going to freeze. And so both of these women are at this space where it's like, they're being forced to really feel the feelings. And the, this is where the embodiment piece comes in. And there's two different ways I want to look at this. For one, when you know how you want to feel in relationship, then it's your responsibility as a single woman to feel that way today rather than the external, once I get the guy or the girl, then I'll finally feel happy, fulfilled, satisfied, seen, adored. But in this case, these two women have the guy. And so I'm having them both really feel into the emotion for one let the emotion come up. And so let's say you're single and you're feeling sad or lonely. It's really important that you feel that emotion because it's, it's most likely old stuff and connected to something old, not the actual present moment. Because if you are present right now here in the present moment, you probably wouldn't be sad because you're present. You're like, wow, look at that beautiful couch. And like, I have a beautiful view and there's like this nice Turkish oriental rug and the plants like in this present moment, all is good. But if feelings of anxiety and fear and sadness come up, it's because it's attached to some memory in the past, or it's, I'm thinking about some future potential of, I'm going to be alone forever, right? So when you're truly present, there's usually not the reason for the emotion to come up. It's attached to a thought. And so what's really important is that we feel what is coming up. And sometimes it just needs to be expressed, come out, have a good cry, rage fest into a pillow, and, and you're good. Like the emotion just needed to come up and out. Other times, though, the emotion is there to teach you something. And so I was just chatting with actually a, a different client, a boxer only client, because I have women I work with just on boxer. And I was telling her, I was like, girl, I want you to just talk to the emotion and see if it has a message for you. And so in this case, she was in a room with a bunch of other women in her field. And she was feeling the comparison of these women have more certifications. These women are better than me. I thought I was coming to this networking event to potentially meet clients. And instead I'm meeting all these amazing, powerful men and women who are quote, quote, better on me. And so it's bringing up all this fear. I was like, so sit with it. And maybe the fear of you're not good enough, you need more certifications. Maybe actually that came up for you to sit more strongly in your power and say, Thank you so much for what it is you had to say, because it made me realize I'm actually more than enough. So thank you for your input. And actually, I'm good here. And I had the same thing happen with my father and I. I just enrolled in a year-long coaching certification program. I want to learn more skills and use them on me, use them on my clients. Like It felt right. And I shared it with my dad. And not that he wasn't supportive, but he also wasn't like 
this is so awesome. He had his hesitations and he shared it with me. And my initial reaction was a bit of a like, well, fuck you, dude. And <laughs> it totally was. I was like, screw you. Don't we just laugh people like that? We need people like that. <laughs> yeah. He's so, on the right, Emerald. How he's totally, about this? Oh my God, seriously. In the full moon, I had a total like, I bitched him out like because he was just poking and pushing and it was full moon and I was so sensitive and like I tried to be polite about it but then he just kept like texting and emailing and I just sent him a 12 minute message of like anger and then sadness and tears and then finally like give me some space do not reply to this message like it really mm -hmm. allowed the stuff to come up and out which was great and for me to set the boundaries and for me to express some things that I hadn't before and my desire request of like dad you're so much in your fucking head like when I am in an emotional place I need you to be in your heart can you be in your heart and I don't think you can which is why I didn't want to talk to you because I know right now what I need is softness and someone to be in their heart anywho I blew up at him but I'm glad I did. So where I was going with this whole story is when I was feeling into the initial F you with my dad and I let the F you come up. I'm like, what is it that you have to share with me? And the anger was there on one hand to be like, I wanted your support. But then it was also like, I don't need your support. I don't need your validation, your approval that what I'm doing is right because I know what I'm doing is right. And then the anger was able to go away. But the anger had a message, which was, Emerald, you know exactly what you're doing and you don't need anybody else, let alone your father, that person like your whole life you wanted validation from, right? You don't need him to approve. You know what's right and best for you and this feels right. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. So where I'm going with all of that is we want to suppress our emotions, especially the negative ones, when the reality is let them come up and out. And sometimes they just need to come up and out. Other times they need to come up, give you a message, and then come out. And so both of these women, well, all three of these women actually that I'm thinking about right now, it was an opportunity for them to sit with the emotions to feel it. And so with one of my clients, we did... Um, like a somatic release session together on zoom. And I was like, you want to do some inquiry? You want to go into this? She's like, please. And you know, we, we sat with the emotion. We talked to the emotion. We brought her higher self to the table, her past self to the table. And she got her answer loud and clear of it doesn't feel right because it's not right. You, there's no other reason. You don't have to explain it deeper than it doesn't feel right. And then, of course, she got so many beautiful messages like the meaning of the relationship and the lesson and what she learned and how she grew and what she was willing to let go of. But she wouldn't have gotten those messages if she would have just kept ignoring the feeling and said, but it's good. Look, on paper, it's good. And so we also don't want to say, okay, the feeling says I should break up with him, so I'm going to break up with him. No, we need to sit with the feeling. We need to feel feel it what is the message that's coming up and so it's so easy to do do the things like make the list but we also need to sit with our feelings so whether we're single and we're feeling sad or lonely or anxious or depressed or we've maybe attracted in a relationship and something doesn't feel right like we need to sit with it we need to feel the feelings and that's what's been coming through for me so much lately, not only for me, but with my clients. And of course, as you know, our clients are our mirrors. So of course it's coming up with them because I'm working on it. So I get to be able to mirror back to them what I'm doing and what works for me. So the second part of the process being the importance of feeling our feelings because they are messengers and we've got to let the old lower vibrational crap to come up and out. If you truly want to be in this high vibe relationship and partnership at this level of trust and depth and connection and vulnerability and intimacy it's like you need to be that with yourself first which means you're willing to unpack the feelings the fear of what if I'm alone forever the fear of I'm not good enough the fear of I'm aging and my skin is starting to wrinkle and sag but can I love myself anyway or I've gained weight recently can I love myself anyway? Because where you are, you have to love where you are to get to this 
where you want to be. You can't get happily ever after paved on the path of dissatisfaction. You can't love your body by hating it. You can't get in a loving relationship by hating the fact that you're single. And so the feeling aspect is so important. And with the awareness of the feeling and the acceptance of the feeling, and this is important because so many people want to jump from awareness to action of like, okay, I'm aware that I'm single. So let's take action of like the middle piece you're missing, the acceptance of this is where I am. And if I was here forever, that would be okay because I'm focusing on making my life the best it could be. And I think of a past client here of like, she had to come to the acceptance of maybe I'm not meant to have kids because that's actually why she married her partner. Well, there's a couple of reasons. For one, she didn't know she could ask for more. So she had a partner that was like, two and a half out of three things that she asked for and she wanted to have kids and a family and she's in her thirties. So she settled. Uh, we worked together for about six months and she, her biggest fear was what if I never have kids, but she and her partner were trying and they couldn't get pregnant. Thank God. Good job spirit. And she had to come to the place of like, you know what, maybe I'm not meant to have kids. She had to energetically let that go. And then she was able to have the courage to leave her partner because she realized there are so many things not working in this relationship. I'm at least going to gift myself an amazing relationship, even if I'm not meant to be a mom. And the fast forward within two years, well, actually within a month of leaving her ex and like finalizing the divorce, she met the man that's now her husband. She's pregnant. She's due in like a week. So like, <laughs> this is how quickly it happened. Like, that was a two year yeah. span. And so she's like, I couldn't possibly start over again. So Instead, she wasted, and again, I say air quotes because there's no such thing, nine months of getting married to the guy and trying to get pregnant. Like, what if she decided before the marriage, but it was all perfect because she needed that experiment to then get her ready for the man she's meant to be with, to have children and a family with. So, you know, there's so many things that I just said in there, but like the biggest thing is you have to accept if not love and be grateful for where you're at, because this is the leaping off point. It's all... um the message that's come through from spirit so many times is what you learned in fifth grade helped you get to sixth grade, but what you learned in fifth grade won't help you pass the sixth grade test to get to seventh grade. It was a prerequisite, a stepping stone to get to six, but you need to learn new things here to get to seventh. And so where you are right now, you can't hate it. You can't reject it. You can't resist it. You have to accept it. You have to extract the lessons. You have to look for the blessings, the gratitudes of like, I'm here for a reason. What do I need to learn? And if you're here and you're resisting it, that's not going to get you where you want to be. Instead, it's what am I here to learn? Like, what are the lessons here? I want to get to this next level, but I need to learn the lessons here to get there. So next level is epic partnership. I'm not there yet because I haven't learned the lessons in single lady, or I'm in a relationship that doesn't last forever. Great. I needed to learn things in this relationship to prepare me for the next one. And this is where so many single women get it wrong. It's like, well, there's something wrong with me. I wasted time. The relationship didn't work. I'm like, no, BS. You needed those lessons. They're all stepping stones. But can you have the emotional intelligence to not make up a story of he should have been the one I should be there by now? No, the acceptance that you are where you are, like write that down. I am where I am. It's so profound, but it's not. It's like, this is where you're at. Can you have the emotional intelligence when you're in the gap, which is the majority of your life to say, this has to be good enough because there's nowhere else that I am. Wow. That was yeah. powerful. That was powerful. <laughs> So this is what I'm going through. <laughs> so much magic, though, coming out of your mouth. So much wisdom. I could, like, okay. it's, to me, it looks like you're channeling stuff life here. Um, mm -hmm. The right information that we need to hear. And a question pops up. And you've kind of touched on it. But I wonder whether um, for those of us, well, not us. For, for, for those, <laughs> for that part of my audience, listeners who are listening and going like, oh, but where is he going to come? I'm doing everything. I've been on this personal development journey and I'm trying and I'm trying and nothing's happening. I keep meeting the wrong ones or there's no one. And I even have um, in mind a friend who was like this for 10 years, except she was like, at first she was like, 
I just want to be single. I got the balls. It was bad. I just want to be single. I just want to work. I want to, you know, build up something. I want to get a house. But then she went from, uh, I want to be single to like, you know what? I don't even care if I meet anyone. But once we gave her enough drinks, because this is a very old, old friend of mine, so I know how to, you know, approach her. She was like, I just want to be with someone, <laughs> you know, but then when she's so much, she's like, I don't even care. I don't care if I'm single. Uh, I don't even have time. All I'm doing is going to work and home. I don't even have time for a relationship. And so she was like this for 10 years. And then um, this magical moment happened where <laughs> I keep saying this story to my clients. I never set people up. But my cousin happened to be single and she was kind of like, I don't want to do dating. I don't have time. I just want to know So I'm like, hey, would you like to go on a date with my cousin? And uh, within two years, thank you, uh, lockdowns here in Melbourne, they got, they fast tracked their relationship and now they're married. And it's like, they're so perfect for each other. But, and so I tell this story to any of my clients who are like this, but when is it going to happen? I've been doing all the things. I don't know what else I can do. If you get a client like this, what do you say to them? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know, I'm this... doing everything. I don't know what else I you know. want me to do. I've done the list. The list doesn't work for me. <laughs> and I mean, there's so many ways that I could answer this because the reality is a woman in that energetic vibration is stuck in the problem. She's noticing the lack. She's noticing what's not working. And I was just having this conversation with a client because ultimately the lesson, the sharing was now has to be good enough. It has to be great as a single woman. So rather than the focus on it's not working, which is probably encapsulating more of your thought space than you're going to give it credit for, because I've had women say this, like I've done all the things and it's not working. I was like, well, be honest with me. How often of your day and thoughts are consumed with what's not working versus the beauty, the magic that's in your life. How often are you, for example, if you knew without a doubt that one day you would have love, and, and that's my belief system, like there is not a doubt in my mind that my person will come in, which means there's not ever me being like, well, I've done the manifestations and I made my list. Like, where is he? Like, that just doesn't <laughs> exist in my field. Why? Because my belief system is so strong that it will show up when I am ready in a vibrational match for it. And in the meantime, it's somewhere in the future. I don't know when someday is going to be. Someday could be today. Someday could be tomorrow. So my belief system is strong enough that what I do today, what can I control today? I can control the activities that I'm doing today that fulfill my life. A partnership is a tiny aspect of life. And mind you, when you're in partnership, it's a bigger aspect, but it's like, I'm focusing on my business. I'm focusing on my physical health. I'm focusing on travel. I'm focusing on my spiritual connection. I'm focusing on friends, I'm focusing on like dancing around the house in my free time. And so the woman who is though in that, like, why isn't it happening? I would challenge her and say, you are not putting enough focus on what you have control over. So if you've put your order in with the universe, so to speak, then trust that the order will be fulfilled, but the order will be fulfilled when you're ready for it, which means you're a vibrational match for it. And if the majority of your time, you're focusing on either A, suppressing, I don't really want it, like your girlfriend until you got her drunk and then the actual feelings came up and out. And a lot of women do this of like, oh, a man would interfere in my life. I'm like, well, maybe if you got the wrong man, but the right man, I promise you, when you think about how many ways a relationship adds to your life, you actually want that relationship. And so- the woman who is in that state, she's not putting enough focus on herself. I'll be honest with you. She's putting it on the external. And so when my clients and I work together, the guy is a very small percentage of our work. So the five-step manifestation that I teach, and we were just talking about this because I'm finishing up my 21-day manifestation challenge, is clarity, confidence, communication, courage, commitment. And if something's not showing up in your life, then you work your way through the steps again, which is one, clarity. Am I really clear in what I want? Or maybe the reason it hasn't shown up yet is there's more sifting and sorting that needs to happen. And so maybe your person hasn't shown up yet because you're not actually clear what's going to serve you. Maybe that's why you have all these dates coming in and men who ghost you and go hot cold because it's giving you more clarity in what you want. So there's that aspect. Second, 
communication. This is past tense or no, sorry, confidence, past tense. Do you really believe you can have it? Do you really think that you can have it? Or is the majority of your time and thoughts spent around? It's not happening. It's not going to happen. I'm not good enough. He doesn't exist. What's wrong with me? Why is this taking so long? So you've really got to check yourself. So if you're clear in what you want, confidence, if your thoughts and belief systems are in alignment, great. Let's move to step three, communication. Are you communicating to the universe that you one day will have divine partnership? You know what's going to happen. You're ready for it. When your single girlfriends talk about online dating, how hard it is, no good men. Are you still strong in your knowing of like, that can be your reality. However, this is mine. I'm open and available for love. It's going to happen at the right time. In the meantime, I'm doing this, that, and the other. You have? Yes. Great. Let's go to step four, courage. Are you taking action and alignment with what you want? So, which means, are you sitting at home all night, every day, hoping and praying and wishing and manifesting? that maybe he's just going to show up on your doorstep or are you the woman who is filling her life with people and places and activities that bring her joy she's going out in the world being as magnetic and radiant and confident as she can but for herself not to meet the guy or the girl and you can tell me yes great let's go to step five commitment commitment is as simple as that you keep moving forward until it shows up. And there is not a doubt in my mind because of what I know to be true about the laws of the universe. If you believe you can have it and you take action towards it, one day it will show up. I just can't tell you which day that one day will be. So for the woman that says that, I would take her through those five steps. And I guarantee you one of those steps, two of those steps, three of those steps, four of those steps, or all five of those steps are not actually in alignment because the woman that's mastered all five of those steps. And I will hand on my heart, use myself as an example. I am so committed. There's not a doubt in my mind that this amazing divine partner will show up in my life one day, which is why there is no like, where is he? Like, who cares? He's doing whatever the hell he's doing. I'm doing whatever the hell I'm doing. But I'm not suppressing and ignoring and pretending. I'm busy living my best life in the meantime. Oh, that is amazing. I love that you've broken it down for us because that makes it so easy. I hope everyone took notes of those steps. <laughs> um, that is wonderful. Well, um, I'm almost at the end of, ugh, I could take this into so many million ways, but uh, since we are looking so fabulous and you're just starting the day and it's almost time for me to go to bed, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to keep you here. Um, but I love being ah! here. I, this could be an eight hour podcast it? episode. Are you kidding I me? I would love that. Can you imagine a marathon? <laughs> we are going to stick with you in this episode till you man I'm gonna, shows up <laughs> anyway, i'm gonna give you six months of coaching in eight hours we can, yes, do this. <laughs> we can do this you know what i would love to have you as um a coach in my boxer just because of the energy you bring you know like just even if i'm having like a droopy yeah. day and i'm like yeah. emerald <laughs> you know well, we can put I have boxer only coaching this week my or this month my specials just to reach more people like yeah. if you just need one week two week four weeks normally boxer coaching was just for my private clients I'm like I get it sometimes people just want emerald in their pockets so yes, we wouldn't. I can do that for you or your listeners like I love it like that's what I love about it because it's like I don't let you not you but you or anybody like maintain down in the dumpsedness of like, no, that's not true. That's absolute bullshit. And so I love boxer coaching. I think it's yeah. so amazing. I think, I think I would demand at least weekly, if not daily photos of your area because, oh my God, where you are. Yeah. It's um, pretty amazing, it's... magical, not going to lie. And I always find places with good views because mm. um, that's really important to me to have expansive views. So these three places I've lived in so far in Tbilisi have just had amazing, amazing views because it's just what makes my heart and soul sing. See? And I think because you know what you want. And I think a lot of us don't know what we want. And that is the hard thing, right? It's, Clarity, it's... step one. Yeah. <laughs> So many would get hung up on that first step. Clarity. Yeah. That yeah. is amazing. What is yeah. coming up for you? Like, I know you're thinking of moving eventually back to the US, mm -hmm. but what mm -hmm. is coming up professionally, whatever, personally, whatever you want to share? Yeah. Well, when is this episode going to air? Like uh, soon yeah. 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 A couple of weeks from now. So, uh, yeah. Well, 
And, he, and here's the thing, and this is the divine balance between masculine and feminine, like strategy and structure, but going with the flow and feminine energy. It's like, I have all these different ideas come through. And so originally I thought my self-love course was going to come out in February and it still might, but right now I'm finishing up my 21 day manifestation challenge. And that inspired me of like, to then have a follow-up 21 day manifestation mastermind incubator, like accelerator in Voxer. And so it'd be a Voxer mastermind, but of course, based on the concepts of manifestation, but we can talk about whatever we want, right? Like that's the cool thing. I'm just finishing a four and a half month mastermind that I was a part of. And I'm like, this is great. I want to bring this magic to my community. And that might turn into a longer term, like six month mastermind. So the reality is like, I have these plans, but then it's like a couple weeks later, I don't know if it's ever going to go. So I still might release the self love course after the mastermind begins. It's like business wise, I feel like I can only launch one thing at a time. So it's like, once I get through the mastermind launch, then it's like, Oh, then I might actually have desire and energy to ma like to launch the private or the, the self love course. And then after that, it might be like, I go back to really focusing heavy on the private coaching, but maybe it's time to do another round of the group coaching, which just finished in December. So it's like, I know, but I also don't know right now. I love it's that not. because it's like, you're, you're like me, you're feeling into the energy of the moment and the group yeah. energy, the collective energy. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and this is where I know, um, a lot of people struggle because they're like, but I need the systems, the structures, you know, like when it comes to business, but like that, but it's so much more fun when you just like you post in a moment because it feels good, you know, the energy is there, or yeah. you launch something because it feels good. I don't want to, I never batch content. I never batch content because I never I use used it. to, but I don't yeah. anymore. I yeah, now it's like every single day, like I'm yeah. just like, what's coming through. Like I'll make reels in advance because they're fun, but it's like, if I post a reel, do I feel like posting that reel today? And what's the message I want? Yes. To with but with posts, see, I can't because I feel like, well, that has expired. I no longer feel like this. I don't even know why I did yeah. that one. Like what was the idea yeah. there? So yeah. I feel you. I know what you mean. So let's just say, I'm going to put all the links below this <laughs> episode, wherever you're I watching, would, listening. Instagram you just will be the best it. thing. Yeah, go find, find Instagram yes. because I put everything in post and reels and my stories. Someone can slide into my DMs and be like, yo girl, what you got going on? And then I could be like, well, this is what I got going on right now. <laughs> be creepy with Emerald. Just slide in yeah. her DMs. Oh, hey girl. <laughs> send me some nudes. No, please don't. <laughs> I'm like, send me some photos, please. <laughs> oh, this is fabulous. So, um, Emerald. Is yeah. there anything that I didn't ask that you wish I asked? Hmm. Well, you know what? We didn't get into the part three. So let's get into the part three real cool. fast. Because no, I, 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 no I think rush. I said this when we were recording. I don't know if I said this before we were recording, but I want to honor that it was there. We were talking about the three parts. Mm -hmm. So the making the list and then the feelings are important. But then the third part is your relationship true north, the vision. And so you meet someone that ticks all the boxes. You meet someone that just feels so good. But the relationship vision, this person desires to travel the world with their partner and not have children. Your relationship vision is I want to stay home, have a house, white picket fence, lots of babies. It's kind of like Kurt and I, he ticked the boxes. I felt a certain way, but the vision, and it took him a little while to come to this conclusion. He never saw himself living with a partner again. And he had always said, like, I'm open to marriage. But as we went down the path together, he realized, like, that's not what I want. So our relationship visions didn't match, even though he ticked all the boxes and I felt how I wanted to feel with him. And so the, the last thing to remember, and we can say this for anything in life, you want the boxes, you want the feeling, but your life needs to look a certain way. And if we're talking to the single women... You need to make sure your partner shares the life vision, shares the values, shares the importance of values. Let's say he values family and so do you, but your value of family is home for the holidays, talking to your mom once a week, seeing her every weekend. And his value of family is like, no, my family, like my wife and children, I don't care about the parents and in-laws. Like if I see him once a year, that's fine. But he could still say he values family, right? And so- this is also really important when someone is creating their life by design, right? Manifestation, conscious creation. It's not just the boxes. It's also not just the feeling, but it is the vision, the manifestation, because I'm 
here in Georgia and it feels a certain way and it's ticking the boxes. But the reality is I know I haven't met my partner here because I don't want to live halfway around the world. Like I just, I don't, that's not my life vision. I want to be closer to my family and my friends back there. I want to be in that time zone. That's where all my clients are. So it's like, even though I'm ticking the boxes of traveling the world and I'm feeling a certain way day to day life vision, this isn't a fit. So these three aspects are really important and the, and the takeaways that I wanted to give your amazing community of consider these things in all aspects of life, not just in a relationship. So yes, what do you want? How do you want to feel? But then what's the bigger picture manifestation? How does this all pull in together? And your ideal partner is going to be a match for all three of these things. And this is a reminder don't set a lot of fear or lack because you will get as a result, whatever the vibration, the energy is that you're putting into it. So if you make decisions in your love life out of the fear of, I couldn't do better, then you will maintain a relationship in that vibration. But I'm here to remind the women of the planet to make their decisions from a place of abundance, love, unlimited possibility. And as a result, you will get life at that level. But the reason you haven't experienced relationships at that level is you're making decisions on a lower vibration. Output equals input. What's the input vibrational energy and frequency you're putting in? That's going to equal the output. So you can have it all. I absolutely believe that. And I also believe that it all changes and evolves. So you manifest an amazing partner. Guess what? In a couple months or years, you want more intimacy, more sex, more connection, more whatever. Like your all definition is constantly going to grow and evolve. And so I have a, a masterclass coming up. It'll probably be past tense after this episode called The Secret to Getting What You Want. And the entire premise is you can have it all, but that's going to continuously evolve. Like you can have it all right now, but guess what? Tomorrow it no longer fits the bill. You want something different more. So how do you understand this process of conscious creation that I just shared with you today and continuously apply it in your life? Because once again, the majority of your life, you're in the gap of, I want more. Like that's being a human being. We consistently desire more. So Take these three aspects and apply it, but you're going to do it over and over and over and over again in your life. Fabulous. I love that. Thank you very much. That was amazing. That was amazing. You've given us so much in this episode. Um, even sharing your journey is so hugely inspiring, I think, because no doubt there are women out there who are doubting themselves, questioning themselves, questioning whether he she will ever come whether they will ever be happy whether they'll ever find true love and to see and hear actually your story and um it's so <clears throat> relatable that was amazing so I just want to thank I, you well I, I want to thank you as well like this is a really beautiful space and container and our connection, our energy, our relationship, like I feel so safe that I get to just be me. I feel so seen and heard. And so I just, of course, want to thank you and all of the amazing work that you're doing in the world. You are such a beautiful, bright light. And if you didn't hear it yet today, like you are so exceptional and just thank oh, you for you. Thank you, my beautiful, beautiful friend. Mm -hmm. I do love that. I'll take that to bed with me. Yes. <laughs> this was so fabulous. Thank you so much for this chat. I can't wait to share this with everyone. Of course, if you are listening to this, you need to go to YouTube and watch this as well so you can see Miss Emerald in action. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. And till next week. Bye.